Well, hi to all my friends at Church at the Mission. It's great to have the chance to come and share with you, especially uh, for the first time uh, for 2021. By the way, Happy New Year to all of you. So here we are looking at Psalm 121, and uh, what we want to do is uh, go through the psalm, uh, we are, but before we do, I'm going to give four introductory comments, and then we'll look at the psalm verse by verse, and then we'll conclude with some final summary comments. So first of all, Psalm uh, 121 is, is the second of 14 psalms in a row that are commonly called the Songs of Ascent. They start at, obviously, Psalm 120 and goes to 134. And they were songs that were sung by Hebrew pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem for the various festivals. You see, the city of Jerusalem is situated on a high hill, and so the, the Jews traveling to Jerusalem for one of the three main annual Jewish festivals traditionally would sing these songs on the ascent or on the uphill road uh, to the city. They are also called pilgrim songs because they are sung by pilgrim on a, or by people or pilgrims on a journey. They have a destination, Jerusalem, the temple, offer their sacrifices, and celebrate with their friends. And so they are, these psalms are also called then the pilgrim psalms. And they are sung, as I mentioned, by people on a journey or destination. We too are people on the journey of life. Our spiritual journey calls for us to seek and to find the God who is living and he is the God of love. And during this journey of life, we sometimes find ourselves in the valley. In the valley, we lose sight of our destination. Difficult times keep us in the valley. In September, many of you would know that both Jan and I lost our, our mothers. Death puts us in the valley. The past two weeks over Christmas, people who are close to me also found themselves in the valley. My sister and her husband separated. My cousin's wife was, was given just a few weeks to live, and then he was diagnosed with COVID and was not able to see her during this critical time. Another friend had a family member commit suicide, and then just two days ago, our niece called us to tell us that her husband is leaving her. The valley is a place of pain and suffering and death, and that th these are always nearby. Second point I want to make is that the Psalms are what we call Hebrew poetry. A few years ago I was speaking with you and talked about uh, poetry. I don't expect anybody to remember that. But poetry, Hebrew poetry is different from ours. One of the um, uh, methods of, of writing Hebrew poetry was that they would have what we call gradation, in which the thought of one verse is resumed in the next verse. And so here in the Psalms of Ascent, if you look at the second line of each verse, it would be picked up by by the first line of the next verse. And so where does my help come from? Verse 1. Verse 2 says, my help comes from the Lord. Or verse 5. Um, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The, the sun will not harm you by day. Um, the Lord will keep you from all harm he will watch over your life in verse 7 the lord will watch over you your coming and going see the re repetition that's found in each uh, uh, of these verses actually verse 1 verse 2 is one segment verse 3 and 4 are another segment 4, 5 and 6 another segment 7 and 8 the final so you get the idea of this building up uh, picking up on where the the other verse left off Thirdly, I want to comment that the first two verses um, are written in the first person. I, me, my. Uh, and this open, these opening verses appear as a, to be a confession by the psalmist. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? However, in verse 3 and then for the rest of, of, of the, the psalm, the language shifts to the second person you. Uh, the last comment I want to make in an introductory, in introductory statement is that the image of God in verses 1 and 2 is the, the image of God as helper and creator. 
And then it shifts from verses 3 on to the image of God being the guard or the keeper or the watchman or the protector. Um, this this word or this term it occurs six times in the in these final three segments, uh, and the ver and the verb is Hebrew shamar, which means to guard or protect. The English translations uh, would translate it as either to keep, to guard, to watch over, or protect. So with that, I want to now go through these uh, segments. Uh, verse by verse of the psalm. So the first one, verse 1 says, I lift my eyes to the hills. In both, sorry, in, in Hebrew, the action of lifting the eyes implies that one looking at the mountains is looking longingly or with desire rather than the mountains or the hills being a place of dread and fear. Rather, the valley is the place to fear. Um, the hills and the mountains are not to be feared. But if you're looking up, then maybe you are in the valley and maybe you're feeling low. And maybe the valley is, as Psalm 23 says, the valley of the shadow of death. But your help comes from above. Your help comes from the hills. Your help comes from the mountains, the, the skies, as we look up to God. Verse 2 it says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That God is our helper and God is our maker. God can help because he is the maker. He is the God of all power who stands over all creation. And as its maker is able to intervene in our lives to ensure that not even our foot will slip. That God is interested in the intimate details of our life and that he is watching closely. And intimately. The word help occurs 20 times, this particular word, in the Old Testament. And 13 of them is in reference to God or Yahweh, as he called in the Old Testament, that God has the ability to save and deliver us. That we find ourselves in valleys, but God will save and deliver us from those situations we find ourselves in. Verses 3 and 4. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Slumber nor sleep. You see, within the ancient Near Eastern tra traditions and cultures, the gods that were there were often frequently depicted as sleeping. This activity on the part of, of these deities was not even considered to be exceptional or unusual. You see, they recognized them as, as just a bit above humans, and that even human needs sleep to perform their, their daily activities, and therefore so do the deities. But the guardian of, Jeru of Israel in Jerusalem... He never nods off. He never dozes, much less falls into a deep sleep. But rather, our God remains attentive and keeps continual watch over his people, so not even a foot of theirs will slip from the path. Some stories from the Old Testament. Saul slept with, when David took his sword and the water jug. The disciples slept while Jesus was praying. The guards who were chained to Peter to keep him in jail slept while the angel freed Peter. But our God, the God of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth, does not sleep. Our God is always paying attention, and he's always watching over us. On to verse 5, it says, The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The word shade here uh, in Hebrew also means defense or protection. And you see, because the shoulder, or sorry, because soldiers would carry their shields in their left hand, that meant that the right side of the body remained exposed and vulnerable. And so therefore, soldiers always sought to have a friend or an ally at their right hand to provide protection. 
Yahweh is that friend standing at our right hand, fending off the potential threats to us. Verse 6, The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The sun and the moon, you see, here we have two concepts, sun and moon, and they're together to create two contrasting ideas or objects in an effort to capture the sense of the whole. So talking about the sun and the moon, it's actually a, a poetic way of, of saying um, that there's nothing that can harm you, neither day nor night you can you be harmed. Uh, and so it, it's in contrast with the God that stands as a protection, protective shade over all of life. You might remember Isaiah, as he, he says in, in chapter 41, verse 12, he says, those who war against you will be as nothing at all, that nothing can harm us because our God is watching over us. Verse 7, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. This idea of God watching over us, keeping us from all harm or evil. Remember the Lord's Prayer? We pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See, Satan has no power over us. Satan may try to scare us. Satan may try to put fear in us, but Satan has no power over us. Because why? God is on our side. He is watching and he will keep us from all evil. He will deliver us from evil. This is the God that we serve. And lastly, verse 8. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This idea of both now and forevermore, that, that God, both in, in the past and in the present and in the future, God is watching over you. God always has been looking out for you. Right now, today, God is watching over you. Every day from here on in, God will protect you. And the question is, do you believe this? Do you hold to this promise? So our summary comments. First of all, what do we learn about God? We learn that God is our helper, that God will be there for us, that God is our aid, that God is also the maker and creator, that, that this is who is watching over us, the one who is all-powerful, the one who is great and almighty, the one who is the creator of all the universe, the one who's created the earth, the one who's created each one of us and everything around us, that this is the God who is our helper. And thirdly, that God is our protector, that God is our guardian, that God is our watchman, that God is, is, is watching over us continuously uh, and never ceases to watch over us. And then, what do we learn about us, about me? What do you learn about yourself from this psalm? Well, we learn that we are fearful that we are afraid, that we find ourselves in times of trouble, that we find ourselves in the valley and, and needing to be able to look up and to cry out to God and say, God, I need your help. I need your protection. See, we all need help. And what we learn from this psalm is that we are cared for. We are not abandoned. We are not forgotten about. Today, God is watching over you. Right now, at this very moment, God is protecting you. Tonight, God will keep watch over you while you sleep. Tomorrow, God will still have his eye on you, keeping you from all evil. And the next day, and the next day after that, God will be guarding you. God got you through 2020, and God will get you through 2021 safely. Let's remember the promise that we also find in Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And so when you find yourself fearful, when you find yourself in the journey of life, needing to look up towards the, the hills, to the mountains, may you find that there is a God, that there is the God, who is watching over you, who is protecting you, who is keeping you, and who is guiding every step of your journey so that you will make it through to the end. May God richly bless you as you ponder over this psalm, Psalm 121, and Happy New Year again. Thank you for listening. God bless.